Ultimately, at least from our, from our perspective, when we look for a software engineer, we're looking for two things first and foremost, which is attitude and aptitude. As far as attitude, we really do believe that software development for, the, for a large part is a team sport. So you've got to be able to collaborate. You've got to be able to achieve consensus. You've got to be able to work together with someone on a problem because it's, you know, lone wolf kind of development these days is just tough to do on a large scale. So from, from that perspective, you've got to be, you know, you have to have, you know, kind of persistence and uh, high motivation. You've got to kind of come to work being passionate about what you do. So that's kind of the attitude side. The aptitude side, I mean, the truth of the matter is, you know, there are some specific skills that make a good software engineer. Being able to think abstractly is key. Being able to have attention to detail. Being able to focus. Uh, and you know, if you don't have kind of that combination of just skills and, and abilities, first and foremost, it's sometimes difficult to become a really great software engineer. Yeah. All too often, when we're trying to hire tech people, we're focusing on uh, the technical skill sets part of the interview, which is an important part. I mean, we, we do need to know that the person we're hiring can do what we need them to do, but we have a tendency to, to dominate our, our interview and our hiring practices with that, and we don't spend enough time um, talking about, do you understand the design practices, and also things like evaluating the person and how they'll fit in the company's culture. You know, I've been places where, you know, absolutely brilliant people get hired, but they just do not fit well with the company. They could do anything the company wants, but the cultures, they, they just don't match. And, and, and so I think that's something, you know, if I could give a piece of advice to any hiring managers out there, or anyone who becomes a hiring manager, think about that as well. Think beyond just what, what do you need from a purely technical skill set and check the boxes, you know, off the resume. Also think about the, the kind of the softer skill set side, if you will, um, of, of, of things. I hire first for passion. And then the other piece is if they're not passionate about what they're doing, I, I really don't care how good they are at it. Um, so first for passion with, with what we're trying to accomplish and passion about what they're doing as a skill. Do you care about being a good computer programmer? Do you care about being a good systems architect? Do you care about a good data structure? Um, and then the other piece of it is for somebody to be hired onto one of my teams, somebody on the team, not only, we have, not only all have to agree that we want to hire the person, but somebody has to agree to sponsor them. So and one of the ways we avoid the brilliant guy who doesn't get along with anybody else is somebody on one of the exist on the team that he's interviewing to join, he or she is interviewing to join. Somebody on that team must say, "I will take this person under their wing. I'm excited to have them on this team. So I will take the burden of bringing them in and helping mentor them into the role of the team." Uh, what, what I often look for is the artistic side. Because what, what we do, in my opinion, is a combination of art and science, right? And so if you think of yourself as a as a manufacturing engineer. Uh, and you, if you tra excuse me, if you train for a very narrow set of skill sets, and you're constantly learning, you know, language heuristics and all that kind of thing, optimizing code. What you're doing is you're pushing yourself more and more to be a manufacturing engineer. And, with, and what I really look for is the artistic side. So, I ask, so when I ask, you know, hiring questions, it's not so much about, you know, can you write me a line, you know, set of code, you know, all the, all of that by heart. It's, you know, tell me about granularity, right? Regardless of what language you've chosen. And how do you make those trade-off decisions? Because those things are going to be true regardless of what language you're using.